in Superbase a foreign data wrapper is where we can take information from a third party table and use it within our Superbase instance and our Flutterflow apps. In this video we're going to look at how we can set them up and what we can use them for. Right, so a uh, foreign data wrapper. So as you can see on the screen there, essentially we can query third party APIs and add the information to tables in Superbase. And we can then have, this particular one's blank, but we can have third party tables within our Superbase dashboard. Um, and I thought the obvious option is Stripe because that's something that I think a lot of people would probably get a lot of use out of. So um, if we go to, so it's database and wrappers. And if you add a wrapper, there are a list of different ones you can use. Um, but I thought Stripe is going to be the obvious use that, like I said, that people would probably get a significant amount of use out of. So I'm going to run through that quickly and what we can do with it and what the data looks like when it's brought in. So I've got another app with some uh, with some foreign data in it. So in the first instance, when you add a wrapper, you will get to add this information, which is given the wrapper a name, get your Stripe API key and your Stripe API URL. Now, if I just get back, because if you click on the wrapper and edit it, you end up in there anyway. So that's basically the information that you put in now the stripe api key on your stripe dashboard if you've got an account you go into the developer section and api keys are there so and it's the secret key is the one you want and then one of the things you have to do you have to um, import at least one foreign table so if we click on add foreign table and basically on Stripe specifically, you get this list of tables that you can pull into your uh, Superbase project and uh, view and use the information. So as you can see, I have got subscriptions and customers brought in. And as we just saw in the table editor, we've got the uh, Stripe customers and the subscriptions and then in Flutterflow I'm just building a, an app here just to, for um, Stripe integration which I'm making a video about so I thought I'd show the wrappers as a separate thing um, and if we go into Superbase settings and you can see we've got read-only views we've got the Stripe customers and the subscriptions so that information from Stripe we can also use within our Flutterflow applications and that will be the same if you're using Airtable or any of the other part, uh, third party APIs on that list. So if I look at the app where I've got some data, so in this app if I go to the Superbase integrations and we've got transactions, checkout sessions payment intents they're the tables we've brought in now I will come back to checkout sessions when we get back into Superbase because um, there is something we can do over and above what is in that list of tables so this is that particular Superbase project uh, that we we're just looking at in Flutterflow there and on the table editor we have got some third-party tables and you can see We've got, this is the data that you bring in from Stripe within, with with the um, with with the third party integration. And then interesting when you click on the J the attributes, which is the JSON, that's the full. That there is the full um, set of information that you uh, get for each for each record in the checkout sessions table. And I've obviously only brought in those particular those particular columns and payment intents is similar sort of scenario we've got some information for some test payments and again you get the full JSON now if I go back to 
the wrappers. So on the stripe wrapper, and if we edit it and add a foreign table, you'll notice that checkout sessions is not within this list. But we can introduce that and many other tables in actual fact. So if we go to the uh, SQ editor, so we can create a foreign table using the SQL editor, which uh, as you remember, the checkout sessions was not on that list of tables in the um, in the wrappers section. So create foreign table and say public checkout sessions and then the information we want to uh, bring into our our table, which is how this one was created because the checkout session ID um, we can use from a payment link which is the easiest way of integrating Stripe we can use checkout ID and sec checkout session ID um, within our apps to help us integrate it with our users so this information here is taken actually in the um, it's actually in the base docs So we have say checkout sessions there and we can create a, um, a foreign table basically for any of these items and it tells us basically what we can what we can do with them in terms of the amount of control we have over them from uh, from within Superbase in the Stripe API. So that's how you do it with Stripe. It's it's, I'm not going over the Stripe section now, I'll say that's another video, but in terms of creating the data wrappers, I think they're pretty useful. Okay, so I've also added one for Airtable, and if we go into the wrapper, basically you have to give the wrapper a name, the same thing, and you get your API key from uh, your Airtable documentation. So in Airtable, um, what I've done, I've actually imported, did a video on the drag and drop where I used nutrition information. I've actually imported all that into into um, Airtable just to uh, put something in there. I'm not an Airtable user, to be honest, although I might start playing with it, see what use it can be. But in your account and developer hub, and then that's when you create your API token and give it a name you have to add the scopes of what you want it to do i selected record the data uh, so i read the data and um, read the schema so read only and then the base is the uh, Airtable project that you're working with so you do that and then it'll give you an api token which you have to copy and paste because you only get it once and then that goes into there and then when you add a foreign table, I actually created a new schema uh, for our table specifically. You have to give your table a name and then the base ID and the table ID. They are in here and your base ID is that number there in the URL. Sorry, that value in the URL, not number. And your table ID is that value in the URL so there what you put in here and then to add your columns basically give it a name and the type of column now I made sure my column name ex matched exactly with the ones in the air table I'm assuming that's probably a requirement um, I guess it's probably best you did to be on the safe side and that's what I've done there I only added two columns just to test it and if you go to the table editor and we go to the air table schema we've got a nutrition table with a load of products with just the brand and the product um, 1554 records now I've already got this in Superbase somewhere anyway uh, it's information but um, just to show the link to air table I'm sure there's Plenty of creative ways you can use this um, if you've got an Airtable app 
and you want to import it and use the information in your flutter flow that would be a great way of doing it so that's the airtable integration so just a couple of final things to note on um on these wrappers both with stripe and airtable basically the keys are encrypted in the vault this is the way that you do it if you do it on the dashboard you can do it without encrypting the keys with the vault if you do it by a sql editor um, but if you do it by the dashboard that happens so i'm having to use security definer functions to access the information in the tables so to access this information i'm having to use security defined functions and the other thing is i have tried using triggers on these uh, and they don't seem to work uh, i think that's because you actually query in the, the foreign database every time you go into it rather than it um, just automatically updating within within Superbase. So uh, just a couple of things to remember uh, if you're going to use these in your in your projects. But with that said, they are a great way of bringing foreign data into your into your apps. So hopefully you can make use of that. If you can, perfect. Uh, if you and also if you've got some value out of this, please consider like subscribe. It's a massive help. And uh, with that said, I think that's it for this video and I will uh, speak to you next time.